स्टेज पे इनवाइट करना चाहूँगी मैं मिस्टर अब्बास अली खान साहब को जो कि एम हैं मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर हैं एबिकस के थैंक यू सो मच सर प्लीज़ कैन वी हैव अ राउंड ऑफ अपलॉज दिल से थोड़ा सा प्लीज़ थैंक यू Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends, speakers, esteemed speakers. Assalamu alaikum and good morning. I'd like to first of all uh, congratulate um, the HR Legends team, uh, especially Mujib Kuyum um, and his team, who put together this uh, ERP conference this morning. Um, you know, it's a really, really important subject. Um, someone just asked me how many ERP deployments uh, are there in the country, and they're in thousands. Um, but in my view, I think there's only 10% of companies so far in the country have successfully done an ERP project. So there's 90% of the way to go. And uh, this is an important conference. It's, it's great to bring a forum together. I see a lot of very bright faces, people who are really experienced in this uh, field. And I'm glad to see some of them are going to come up and share their experience because uh, you know, that is what is really needed, for us to come together, share our experiences, learn from each other, because ultimately what it, what it will mean is that we are able to deliver better quality in terms of uh, implementations, adoption, and talent. So congratulations to you guys. Uh, well done. And I hope this is going to be the first of many you know, to come. So uh, I'll very briefly introduce uh, the company I represent, Abacus Consulting. Um, we are a firm which started off uh, in 1987, 32 years ago, and uh, with one mission statement. And that was uh, around business transformation. So whatever we've done ever since we've been around has been all around business transformation. And um, Gulam Mustafa Saab, who spoke earlier uh, just before me on digital transformation, yes, digital transformation is you know, the big challenge of the day, uh, but business transformation has is, is always been around. And you know, they say the only constant is change. So um, as companies, you know, we are always, we always need to reimagine ourselves, to rethink ourselves and, re and, and to retransform ourselves. And at Abacus, you know, this is what we thrive on. We, we thrive on being a partner, you know, to our customers to help them deliver important transformation projects and initiatives. Um, we do that in multiple dimensions. Uh, digital is one of our important dimensions. We, um, and, and ERP is, of course, a subset of that. Uh, and I'm going to talk about digital and digital transformation and ERP um, a little more. But uh, definitely ERP, uh, ERP is a part of an overall digital transformation journey. Um, it, it, you know, it's not in itself a digital transformation uh, 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 you know, sort of uh, solution. Um, but apart from digital, we work uh, in um, other dimensions. Uh, we, are very, we are leaders when it comes to human capital transformation, helping our customers transform their human capital strategies, how better to organize, how to manage talent, you know, how better to find talent. Um, these are subjects that are very close to our heart. We work with Mercer, uh, the leading HR consulting firm in the world. Uh, we represent them in Pakistan. Uh, we also are very, very active in public sector transformation. Uh, we work with the government in a very big way, especially on projects which are funded by uh, multilateral institutions. Um, uh, and we work with the federal government, all provincial governments, and we work with government entities in the region as well. We've done a lot of work in the Middle East in public sector transformation as well. Um, and finally, uh, operations transformation. We, we, are, we have a big uh, footprint uh, in the BPO sector, uh, business process outsourcing. Uh, we uh, have uh, you know, a facility of 1,200 seats 
uh, between Lahore and Islamabad. And we are one of the biggest PPO uh, players in the country as well. Overall, we are nearly 3,000 people. We work from 10 offices. Uh, uh, apart from Pakistan, we have offices in uh, Dubai, in Riyadh, and uh, now in London, where we recently launched uh, our office uh, earlier this year. Um, coming to the subject, ERP, uh, we've been very close uh, to this subject. We started our journey um, as an ERP partner uh, with SAP in 2005. Uh, we're a gold partner of SAP now, and um, since then, you know, we have done more than 600 deployments. Um, a lot of them are in Pakistan. Uh, but apart from Pakistan, we worked in uh, just about every country in the Middle East region from our offices there. Uh, we've done a lot of work in East Africa uh, and North Africa in countries like Egypt, Kenya, uh, Malawi, Zambia. We're very active in those countries. And now we are also uh, representing SAP in the UK and Ireland, uh, where we have just commenced our first deployment uh, this month. So. Um, you know, overall, uh, we're one of the leaders when it comes to ERP implementation. Last year, in 2018, uh, we did 100 projects, 100 ERP projects uh, globally, you know, um, about half of them in Pakistan and uh, the rest in, in the Middle East and East Africa. So with that, uh, I think I'm going to uh, move on to my, I think I had a few slides there, I don't see them on, on the uh, chart but yeah sorry thank you is this uh, right so I think uh, the 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 gentleman just before me talked about dig digital transformation at length and uh, I'm not going to talk about uh, it too much at a theoretical level, but I think it's important to understand that you know, digital transformation is not equal to ERP implementation. It's far beyond that. It's much broader than that. And in fact, for us as a company which has uh, implemented uh, over 600 ERP projects, um, one of the big challenges for us you know, came about uh, a couple of years ago when many of our customers who had successfully undergone the ERP journey, the ERP implementation, came to us and asked us, you know, now what is next? You know? And uh, of course, it's easy to get into that mindset where, you know, ERP implementation is the digital, is equal to tr dig digital, digital transformation, but in actual fact, um, a lot of the focus of the ERP system is, as you know, is um, in the back office. And, uh, and, and when, when our customers have come and ask us what is next, um, you know, it makes us think uh, about what, the, what other possibilities there are. And uh, yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's this infographic here, I think this really spells out uh, the need to look beyond the ERP system. I mean, if we look at 2018, we look at this particular infographic, I'm not gonna read them all out, there's a lot of uh, numbers there, but just in one minute, you know, we had on average 3.9 million Google searches, 4.3 million YouTube uh, videos watched, just in one minute, on average in 2018. Um, 12.9 million text messages sent, and 18 plus million uh, weather forecast requests sent onto the internet to the weather channel. So this is really what characterizes what is happening in the consumer space, your customers, individuals. You know, this is what is characterizing how they are choosing to interact with others and with businesses. So with this rapid digitization in the consumer space, you know, um, the, the key question now is for 
companies is how to respond to that. And when we look at an ERP project, it becomes essential you know, to be able to leverage your platform in a way that you can connect you know, digitally with your customers out the outside. And this is what digital transformation is about. It's about digitizing every facet of the business. Yeah. It's about looking at the ecosystem, what's happening in the ecosystem, and connecting to it, and leveraging upon it. Yeah. It's not about just staying in your back office and automating your processes. That is really important. You, you can't do much without that. But digitization is about connecting to the wider digital world, the world outside. And this is what, you know, what we, what we are saying to our customers that this is what is beyond the ERP. You know, once you know, you've implemented an ERP system successfully, um, these are the challenges, these are the things uh, that, that you know, we, we've got to focus on uh, to truly leverage you know, uh, the, this, this new world. So, um, now, survey after survey, you know, um, in which businesses have been asked about their top priorities, have indicated that uh, three common top priorities have come out again and again. And they are um, delivering an unparalleled customer experience building new revenue streams and you know optimizing your operational costs and and when you talk about digital when you talk about digitization it's not just something you do because everyone's talking about it these are the goals of a digital strategy and we are working with a number of our customers in Pakistan around the Middle East around digitization and the one big conversation that we're having with them is simply cost to income ratio. So when they look at a digital project, they ask us this tough question, how is it going to change our cost to income ratio? For example, in banks, um, you look at the cost to income ratio, it starts everywhere from 80%. So costs are 80% of income and runs all the way down to you know 65%. This is an analysis of Pakistani banks. But if you look at uh, the vision and, and the opportunity that digital brings, when you look at automation, AI, connectivity, you know, it is possible and demonstrable to bring that cost down to 35%. So you look at, and, and this is really uh, what the big focus of uh, digital transformation has to be. You know, you're not doing it just because um, you know, it's, it's a fashion, but you're doing it to deliver um, you know, uh, the core business objectives. And uh, the speaker before me uh, very eloquently talked about it. Um, it, it means uh, bringing out new revenue models. Um, and I'll talk about that a little more, but you know, when, when you look at digitization, there's a lot of opportunity to connect with the digital ecosystem and build new revenue models. And it's all about innovation, you know, it's all about identifying opportunities, having the right people in your team and being able to capitalize on those opportunities um, and being able to disrupt you know uh, those disruptive forces which are coming your way e-commerce digitization being ahead of them capitalizing on opportunities and 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 building those re new revenue streams for yourself another important uh, I think uh, uh, aspect of what's happening in the world out there, which we must always remember when we look at digitization or when we look at ERP. Uh, you know, the, the consumer now is, prefers, his, his, his preferred channel of engagement is changing rapidly. You know, he has a smartphone in, in his pocket and this is how he prefers to communicate with his friends, with his family, with his vendors, with his business, with, 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 with businesses. As an employee or as a customer, this is how people are choosing to interact with the world around them. 
So when we deploy our digital strategies or our ERP system, this must be at the forefront of our thinking. You know? We've got to think mobile, because if we're not thinking mobile, you know, we're not really preparing for the future. You know? We're building systems which are antiquated, which are in the back office, which are difficult to use, which people don't accept easily. You know? So uh, you know, mobile has got to be at the center of our strategy uh, when it comes to uh, digitization and ERP. I'm going to run through the slides. I'm, I'm conscious that uh, we're running short of time. So I think one other, one other very important thing that you know, I think we, we must not ignore, and I hope other speakers will also address this, uh, uh, you know, the fourth industrial revolution, there's a lot of talk about the fourth industrial revolution, the fifth industrial re revolution. So here's Mark Carney, who is the chief, uh, the, the uh, uh, governor of the Bank of England, and talking about how AI is going to uh, disrupt uh, the world. Well, AI is an incredibly disruptive force. You know? And uh, it is, in every field, I mean, for example, in warfare, after, after nuclear power, it's, it's considered to be the next generation of military technology. So uh, in business, it's, its disruptive effects are deep and they're coming very fast. So, you know, uh, whatever you do, it is really important that, you know, um, you're looking at AI, you know, you're planning for it, you're investing yourself in projects uh, which are road mapping you um, in a way where you can leverage artificial intelligence. And uh, there's a lot of very scary stats that are available, but the one that I'll, I'll just uh, go by one, that 38% uh, of jobs uh, by 2030, uh, it's a US stat, but 38% of jobs are going to be um, lost to AI, replaced by AI. You know, and that's just over 10 years uh, from now. And it's already happening. So uh, whatever you do, when it comes to digital transformation, when it comes to ERP, you know, you've got to be thinking mobile and you've got to be thinking uh, AI. So in our view, uh, I'm just going to talk through some key trends, what we think is you know, going to be affecting um, the ERP landscape and when you go out there and when you choose the partner that you work with and uh, the technology platform that you go with, I think it's very, very important to keep these things in mind. You want to work with somebody who is you know, in line with, with these developments. And uh, I think the five key things to look at that we, are, uh, you know, uh, that we think you know, are going to be the priorities in the future, first and foremost, uh, I think we uh, we are here at an ERP conference. I think a lot of us, most of us know what is referred to uh, when we say the Internet of Things. Um, connected devices. By 2020, there's going to be 20 billion connected devices. That's two and a half connected devices per human being. You know? so, um, and, and this rate of increase is exponential. So you know, by 2030, um, you can expect that to be closer to 100 billion. Devices. So uh, the opportunities that this is presenting uh, in business are numerous. And you know, I can't possibly go through them all um, in one session, but uh, they're small things, they're big things, um, things as simple as maintenance, connecting your, connecting your equipment, um, your field uh, vehicles, back to your ERP systems, back to your uh, uh, corporate uh, uh, systems. So, you know, um, there's new, numerous, uh, numerable opportunities here. And again, um, this is, you know, if you're thinking about an ERP product or if you have done one already, um, you know, this is something, you know, uh, to be thinking about now going forward, how you can leverage the Internet of Things uh, and connect it back to your ERP system. Uh, wearable technology. Uh, last year in Barcelona, we saw a company in the healthcare services uh, industry which connected a wearable heart rate monitor 
to an SAP CRM system. So, you know, which allowed them obviously to uh, identify potential, a potential problem um, in real time and react to, a, re react to that as, as fast as possible. Very, successful, uh, very successfully deployed in a number of uh, countries. And, uh, and that's just one example of what wearable technology can do. Um, the uh, variety uh, of different types of wearable technology that you know, we are expecting to see in the next five years uh, is going to be uh, quite, quite a lot. And there's going to be a lot more opportunities I think I've lost my slide there. So variable technology. Then the next one that I think we must all be looking at is big data and analytics. Um, I think most of you have probably already seen this problem. Uh, the quantity and the sources of data are increasing so rapidly. I mean, you talk about connected devices, variable technology, the rate at which they are producing data is so high and it's exponentially increasing that there's a real challenge on the table and a challenge and an opportunity. How do you manage that data? You know, that's the first question. And, and then how do you leverage that data? So again, you know, as you're going into uh, this, you know, you've got to be thinking about this at the outset. You know, um, you know the, the opportunity for digitization can only be really fulfilled if, if we have a big data strategy around uh, our, our uh, digital, digital plans. Um, it's the age of context, so technology is, is able to understand us better. Um, you know, for example, you know, uh, a field service engineer who goes to a site and you know, just from his location, from his geolocation, he served uh, the work order, the specs, the requirements uh, onto his mobile device. So context, so understanding what information is required um, and when it is required and by whom it's required and being able to deliver that information according to a particular context. And this is again something that is very fast developing and it's very much related to uh, the ERP system and the digitization plans. Um, and finally, um, and you know, opening opening your business to innovation, and this is something that we are very very active in uh, uh, with a number of our customers uh, in Pakistan and the Middle East uh, through APIs. You know, you talk about building digital assets, you talk about building systems, building data, you know, having analytics, and the question is, you know, how can you connect all this with the outside world? in a way where you can monetize it. So for example, how do you connect to government institutions? You know, how do you connect to your suppliers, your customers? And, and this is, it's all about APIs. And as, as we go into a digital strategy and we build digital assets, the opportunity for opening our own digital assets, connecting with the ecosystem, and leveraging that and monetizing that, these opportunities will increase. So, you know, these are, these are the trends. I mean, uh, you know, when you look at an ERP uh, project, please, you know, we don't look at it as a back office automation anymore. We look at it as part of a wider digital transformation uh, initiative. And, and to do that, one has to be looking at these things very closely and thinking about them and planning and putting roadmaps uh, as to how we can leverage these things in, in, in the future. So um, in doing so, what we, what we have uh, devised is uh, what we call the Abacus Digital Journey. Um, we put together, and many of our customers who are already uh, very successful with their ERP are now on this journey. Um, and, you know, we. We are now looking at what, what we try to do here is we put together a set of capabilities which can help our customers you know, achieve all those things which we've talked about earlier, the trends and, and the pressures on digitization. In order to do all those things, we realize that we need to develop our own capabilities to be able to assist our partners 
and in leveraging on, on, on those opportunities. So there's a few things up there. I'll just talk about a couple. Um, there's RPA, Robotic Process Automation. Processes which are repeatable um, are being automated. You know, uh, and this is happening here in Pakistan. Our customers, people like Telenor, JS Bank, others, um, are doing projects where you know, simple tasks such as entering an invoice, comparing it to a purchase order, uh, sending an email uh, for approvals, for payments, uh, these things, you know, robots can be trained to do. Software robots can be trained to do them. And RPA platforms are now doing this very thing. I mean, the biggest example of RPA is, was recently in Japan last year where a big bank saved one million man hours uh, in just six months. Yeah? And uh, it's just explosive. The rate of, it's, it's AI, it's automation, and the rate of uh, adoption is just incredibly fast. And so um, this is something that we are working on. Um, this complements your ERP system because uh, there's a lot of tasks which, uh, there's a lot of tasks which robots can't do as well as humans, you know, but there's a lot of tasks which robots are, are much better at. Uh, they can do it faster, they don't make mistakes, um, and uh, repetitive tasks are going that way. So this is an important area for us. We, we are working with um, a number of our customers on this, on this particular dimension. Apart from that, uh, we talked about API management. Uh, you know, we work with Google on API management, uh, and that is about you know, leveraging your digital assets, opening them up, connecting them to the digital ecosystem. People like the e-commerce providers, people like the Easy Pesas, people like Nadras and others. And when you make those connections, you, know, you start to think of how you can monetize those connections. For example, Nadra, they monetize their digital assets very nicely. You know, every time they do an ID card check, you know, they charge 15 or 20 rupees for it. So in the same way, you know, you know, the new thinking is that the digital assets that you're building, it could be a customer base, it could be a marketplace, it could be, you know, and an master data of inventory. You know, of course, you have to think about how you can leverage that, but these digital assets, you know, are monetizable. And uh, there's a lot of thinking that's going into this, and we're working closely with a number of customers on this dimension as well. And finally, um, we talked about mobile. Uh, we are working with uh, a company called Kony, uh, who have uh, a next generation mobile apps uh, platform. Um, you know, when you develop mobile apps, whether it's for your employees or your customers, uh, experience is paramount. You know, you don't want to give a mobile app with a, with a bad experience. Trust me, it doesn't work. It does the opposite of what you wanted to do. Um, so, you know, we have, uh, we're working on a platform which um, enables our customers to deliver mobile apps very fast, connected to the ERP system, and uh, deliver a, a superior experience. So with that, uh, I think I'm going to uh, bring my the presentation to a conclusion. Um, Finally, I'd just like to say that, you know, our strategy is now to keep digital to the core, you know, so which means that, you know, a lot of, a lot of digital projects, when they conceived, um, they, they're planned around the back office, you know, uh, the support function, the finance, the procurement, the inventory, uh, you know, but what we're saying is that, no, you know, we've got to take digitization to the front, to the core of the business, to the core business activities. And that's when really digital, the promise of digitization is going to be delivered. So that's our motto. That, that's, that's, that's what we're doing. We, we keep digitization to the core. And with that, you know, again, I welcome you all to, to the conference. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you benefit from it. Thank you very much. And salam alaikum.